Welcome back. Welcome to everybody watching the replay. In just a second here. Turn it down. I don't know if anybody caught my last scope. It was really short. This one will probably be short too. But uh, my last scope was on three ways to activate and cooperate with your angels. Number one is declare God's word. Number two, to fear God and not your situation. And number three, to make the command. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, I feel like the Holy Spirit was uh, telling me I forgot, I forgot a couple of things before I got off. <laughs> it's easy to do. But, um, the Holy Spirit wants me to share with you a couple of uh, examples that, that has happened with me personally. When I have employed my angels, when I've teamed up with Holy Spirit and with the angels around me. Mainly in deliverance. You now we we have a uh, a gentleman who's homeless in our community. We help him many t every time he stops by. And uh, the very first time I met this man, my pastor had actually went to Walmart to purchase some supplies for him, and uh, left me in charge to talk to him. <laughs> At the time. I was thinking, you know, at, at the time my thoughts were, why are they leaving me with this guy? I have nothing in common with him. I don't know. I've never been through the stuff he's been through. There's no way I can relate to him. But uh, as we talked for a few minutes, the Holy Spirit uh, gave me a few things to say to him and directed the conversation as he wanted it to go. Well, the, this guy asked for some prayer. And he said he was ready to... He's ready to be free from everything that Satan was using to hold him back. Well, uh, we barely got started praying for him, and these demons started manifesting in him. So, of course, I teamed up with the angels. Uh, now, there was a f few other women in there with me, uh, several other intercessors, so I was not alone. But uh, this was my first... My first uh, First-hand experience with a demonic manifestation. That was my very first time seeing this face-to-face. -face. And, uh, you know, I, I, Holy Spirit knows how to prepare us. You know, years ago, I actually read this book, uh, Bob Larson's Book of Spiritual Warfare. Now, it's been several years, so uh, I didn't remember everything in it. But Holy Spirit brought to my memory just those things that I needed to use in that moment. So I teamed up with the angels. I commanded the angels and released the angels with their swords against these demons. And uh, while the demon, uh, boy, all these intercessors, we all started attacking these demons, binding them up. So they start trying to get this man to, to crawl out the door. By the time he got to the door, he was on the floor because uh, once he got out, the uh, you know, he was in one of our classrooms, and uh, I started saying, Holy Spirit, knock him down, and release the angels, tell him to knock him down. And every single time I said, Knock him down, Lord, this man actually reacted as if he was being hit from above by something giant. You know, the angels were beating the snot out of that demon, <laughs> they were knocking it down. This man ended up face down on the floor. Uh, Demons were growling, trying to reach out and grab us and all that mess, but uh, they couldn't touch us. And uh, any time these angel, any time these demons manifest themselves, I team up with Holy Spirit and with the angels. I let Holy Spirit lead and guide me. He shows me what to command the angels to do, and so I do that, and I see the effects of it. You now another thing actually just happened. Uh, I think it was yesterday yeah yesterday morning I volunteer uh, I hope I don't offend nobody but you know what gotta tell what happened you know uh, I'm spirit filled 
I believe I'm part of a deliverance ministry. We train to cast out demons. And uh, I actually volunteer at a ministry down the street run by Baptist. They don't even believe in that stuff. Well, it happened right there in the middle of them yesterday morning. I was leading this young lady to Jesus. And this thing, this demon starts manifesting. I was trying to lead this young lady to, to Christ. She was, uh, you know, she was praying a prayer of salvation, but she never could get to the name of Jesus. This demon manifested, started choking her, and started growling and and uh, just tormenting this poor young lady. So I started, I mean, I immediately teamed up with Holy Spirit and with the angels and bound up this demon. It's it started trying to crawl out the door. I got my oil out, anointed myself first. I stood in the door. Uh, oh, it's freezing. I'm sorry about that. I don't think there's much I can do about it. There's, uh, we have really bad internet here. But, uh, anyways, let me try this. Becky, welcome, welcome. I was just getting started talking about a experience I had yesterday. If you get a chance to go back and watch my replay of my previous video, uh, the Holy Spirit told me to t teach His people how to employ their angels. So in my previous scope, I went over three, three uh, main strategies to employ your angels. And uh, this scope, God reminded me that I need to tell some experiences. So uh, I was actually just starting... Uh, uh, Becky, I know you know I'm spirit filled. I'm uh, I'm on fire. <laughs> People call me a burning fireball. Well, I volunteer down the road at a Baptist uh, uh, food pantry. And yesterday morning, I was yesterday morning I was leading this young lady to Christ, and she was praying this prayer of salvation, but she never could get to actually. I mean, she could say, I repent, but when she asked Jesus to come into heart, she could not say it. This demon started manifesting. So I teamed up with my angels, with the Holy Spirit, and we went to town on them demons. I immediately called my pastor, first of all, uh, because I know I'm, uh, I know better than to attempt any deliverance session alone. You never do that alone. you got to have at least two or three people doing that. Uh, so I called my pastor. He was... I think he was busy with schoolwork, and then he heard this demon growling over the phone. He said, is that her? Said, yes, sir, that's her right now. Oh, okay, well, I'm on the way. <laughs> he hung up. and it took him a while to get there, but, uh, you know, I started binding this demon. I started commanding the angels to bind them in chains. I started commanding the angels to strike them down, and, uh, I, you know, they tried to get her up and have her, you know, crawl out of there. I stood in the doorway. She couldn't get past, and so I pulled out my bottle of oil that I have on me. I anointed myself first, prayed for protection, and then I reached down and put one little dab of oil on her forehead. And man, that demon hated that. Uh, man, that thing crawled up in the in the uh, in the corner, holding its head, and then crawled up underneath the table that we were just sitting at, and into the corner on the other side of the room. Man, the angels had that thing cornered, <laughs> and. Um, Man, it was a powerful experience. Uh, well, you know, on the inside, I'm like a little boy. Inside, I'm getting so excited. Hey, praise God, it's working, it's working. But uh, I didn't break my concentration. I just kept on binding the demons in the name of Jesus, commanding them to obey and, and let her go in Jesus' name. You know, uh, I, I never could get her to uh, actually accept Jesus. And then because this thing would always take over and start choking her. So Holy Spirit told me, unforgiveness so i asked her uh, you know her sister happened to be in there holding her down but um i asked her if there's anybody that you haven't forgiven in your from your past you know unforgiveness if you have if you have if you're holding on to offenses against someone from your past that is a entry point for the devil to come in and wreak havoc on your life and if you're not saved if you don't have Jesus in your life, then it makes you a target for p demonic possession. Um, I do believe Christians who truly have Jesus in their heart, uh, 
in their heart, in their lives, who really live for Jesus. They cannot be possessed by a demon, but they can be oppressed. But this was a, a full-blown possession that had taken place. And uh, she, kept, she kept saying, Lord, I can't, I can't forgive him for what he did. I can't forgive him. And the Holy Spirit gave me some insight. He showed me what had happened, but, uh, you know, I didn't. All I, all I told her, I pulled out my Bible. I started showing her scriptures on forgiveness. I'm saying, look, if, God, if, you can't, if you cannot forgive him, God can't forgive you. And I told her, the Holy Spirit gave me a word for it. Look, when you're tired of this thing taking control of you and tormenting you like this, then you will forgive him. You have to forgive him. And uh, so uh, between me and her sister, we convinced this young lady to finally, she finally gave in and she forgave him. Uh, that demon, kept, he tried, I mean, this thing kept choking her, kept taking over. He growled at me and then he started laughing saying, this is my child. And a man's voice came out of this woman's body. And uh, I, I Fought back. I said, no, he, no, she is not. She's a daughter of God. And I command, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I command the angels to bind you in chains. I release the sword of the Lord against you. Of course, they went, no. <laughs> they, you know, when they, when they're, when the demons are being tormented, I love it. <laughs> I love using the angels to torment the demons. Uh, you know, they're tormenting these poor souls. Well, I, I love releasing the angels and the sword of the, the sword of the Lord to torment the demons back in return. And I uh, commanded them to loose her tongue and to allow her to speak for herself. And uh, then she was finally able to gain somewhat control of her of her mind and her mouth for a few moments. And uh, finally brought her to a place where she confessed forgiveness for this man and she released him for what he did. And then she was able to pray for salvation. And... Uh, you know, I never, I never would have attempted a any kind of deliverance session on my own by myself. But I really didn't have much of a choice. This demon was, was about man. These Baptists were <laughs> flipping out. They were freaking out. They didn't know what was going on. But uh, you know, you know, uh, Holy Spirit in me. He just he led me how to take authority over the situation, and uh, and uh, that, that demon retreated. Uh, there's a few. Uh, you know that was just the tip of the iceberg. There's still a few things she she needs deliverance from that she needs inner healing and deliverance to go through. But uh, the first battle was won for the kingdom of heaven. We got another soul in the kingdom because of that. And uh, Becky, if you guys go back and watch a replay, uh, actually already told another story about another man. Um, we have a homeless man in our that comes in our community that comes around here every once in a while, but every few months he'll stop by, ask her for help. We do what, he, what we can. Uh, I want to share another instance that happened with the same man that uh, happened, I think, one of the last times he was here before my prophetic school. He, uh, it was just me and my pastor, Apostle Tate. We were the only two in the church, and... Um, we were just loving on him and ministering to him, and all of a sudden these demons took over, and and uh, one of them told us its name, and uh, Apostle Tate looked it up, and and uh, we found out this is supposed to be a blue demon. Well, you know what? <laughs> uh, we had just birthed out a revival in Conway, Arkansas, in the northern Arkansas. Uh, it's still going today. A year later, it's still burning hot, and it's called the Blue Flame Revival. And it's, you know, blue flame is the hottest flame that there is. So I said, you know what? He may be a blue devil. We got a blue flame that's hotter than him that'll burn his butt. So we started releasing the blue flame on him. Boy, he, we were tormenting that devil. Uh, we love to torment devils around here. <laughs> but um, now Pastor Tate, he's a, uh, how should I say this? He's a big guy. <laughs> and he had all his weight and his strength standing over this skinny guy that was this several demons were manifesting and he was powering up he said he was raising him up and uh i just kept teaming with the holy spirit and teaming up with the angels and commanding the angels to bind them to strike them down releasing the sword of the lord against them that's the most powerful tool they hate that but uh 
<clears throat> excuse me, but uh, we were able to, uh, with the help of Holy Spirit and angels and the name of Jesus Christ, we were able to subdue those demons. Uh, now we haven't been able to fully deliver this man yet because he is unwilling to lay down his bottle. If he were willing to stop drinking, I believe he could be free. And, uh, you know, my pastor told me that while I was gone, while I was in South Carolina for my School of the Prophets for just under six months, he ran, ran into this man in town. And he was, at the time, he was completely delivered. He was in his right mind. He was preaching the gospel. And uh, he came back maybe a couple of weeks back here. And, uh, and uh, I talked to him for a minute. And he, I mean, he then went back to his old ways. And I asked, I told him, well, brother, what, what happened to you? I heard you were doing really good for a while. What happened? He said, well, cancer happened. Uh, I didn't get a chance to finish talking to him. I'm praying for another opportunity to finish. But, um, no, I was, Holy Spirit had me trying to uh, convince him, hey, look, you need to trust God. Trust God, no matter what. God is bigger than cancer, you know. It don't matter what your situation. You know, uh, just real quick, I'll go over the, I'm gonna, over the three main ways that uh, that I released in my previous scope. Uh, how do we loose or release the angels to work on our behalf? Number one is to declare God's word. Psalms 103 verse 20 says, "Bless Adonai, you angels of His, you mighty warriors who obey His word, who carry out His orders. Angels obey." The word of God. Angels are activated when you declare the word of God. You know, God gives us an example. He prophesies the end from the beginning. And that's what he wants us to do. He wants us to prophesy a supernatural godly end to whatever situation, whatever circumstance Satan is bringing against you. If you prophesy... From the beginning of that situation or circumstance, a supernatural end to it, you will see the word of God come true. You will see it come to pass. You know, uh, God wants us to call those things that be not as though they were. That's what prophesying is. We are declaring an end that we want to see to come into existence. <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. I have some sinus issues. <clears throat> You know, the second, the second way that we release angels is to fear God and not situations. Psalm 34, 7 says, The angel of Adonai, who encamps around those who fear him, delivers them. Angels deliver those who fear God more than they fear their circumstances. By speaking God's word, you are keeping your tongue from evil and from speaking lies. And when you do, the angel of the Lord will encamp around you to deliver you in times of trouble. These angels do this because you show the fear of the Lord by speaking his word. And the third way that you activate and release your angels to work on your behalf in your favor is to make, just simply make the commands. Start prophesying. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 11 says, Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker, Ask me of things concerning my sons, and concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. God actually tells us to command him concerning the work of his hands. We can command the hand of the Lord. You know, people with religious spirits come against me all the time saying, well, you can't do that. You can't command the angels. That's God's job. No, the Bible specifically states we are to command the angels. It says we are to we are going to be judging the angels. The judge is greater than that the one being judged. If God tells us to command him, command his hand concerning uh, concerning our lives, then why would not we would not be able to command the angels who are under him? You know their purpose, the purpose of the angels that surround us is to serve us. Their works of, there's, uh, excuse me, uh, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 says, Behold, are they not all spirits of service 
who are sent into service for the sake of those who are going to inherit life. So angels are, are sent to encamp around us, to work on our behalf. So you must command the hand of the Lord. You must command the sword of the Lord against the satanic enemies that come against you in your life. You know, you just produce the fruit. Don't worry about anything else. You know, I, wouldn't, I don't go around looking for demons. I don't try to get them to manifest. Uh, I was just simply leading this woman, this young lady, to Jesus. I was leading her to, to be saved, and the demon just showed up. Produce the fruits. Do the work of an evangelist. That's what I was doing. I was doing the work of an evangelist. That's not my office, but that's the work I was doing. That's the work that God sent me to this particular ministry down the road from us to do. I was, I helped counsel people down there, and uh, even this Baptist uh, minister that that leads the thing, he he said, "Well, you know what? I'm glad you were here, <laughs> uh, because of the fruit. You know, you just produce the fruit, and the people will follow." Uh, I know I'm getting off topic here, but, uh, you know, don't worry about followers. Just worry about producing fruit, doing the work that God has put in front of you to work on. Work on the assignment he's put before you, and followers will come. People see the fruit, and they come. As freely as you have received, so also you should freely give. As you freely receive of God's Holy Spirit. And he produces the fruit in you. And you do his work that he commands you to do. He, you follow his leading, ministering to people, just showing his love to them. When you produce fruit, then people will come. When you give that fruit freely to those who need it, then the people will come and follow. And I see too many people with poor leadership skills. They, they, they try to... Uh, they go around trying to find followers. Well, you don't have, that's not God's way. You know, you don't have to look for followers. You just have to produce fruit. Do the work that God has put before you. Fulfill your own assignment. And as you produce fruit, as you give freely of the fruit and show God's love, then people will come. Followers will come. The followers that God wants to follow you and your ministry will come to you. So don't even, you don't even need to worry about that. I'm still freezing up. I'm sorry about that. Um, I just got bad Wi-Fi here. We're, we're hoping to be able to upgrade it pretty soon here. So keep praying for finances for us. And God is in control. I trust God's going to do it. But uh, like I said, just the Lord wants you to employ your angels. He said, there's too many of my people who speak in doubt, unbelief, and fear, who have angels encamped around them, but they keep their angels unemployed. Their angels can't do anything because they won't speak in faith. The Lord is telling you to rise up and speak out in faith. Declare in faith. This universe was built off of words. How did how was the world created? God spoke. God spoke. He released words into the atmosphere. So words are words are what this universe is constructed off of. Our universe is built on words. So we must speak words, declare the word of God to alter those things that brings against you in your life. Satan has already altered most of our lives through sin. That's why we must repent and we must declare the word of God to alter it back to God's design. You know, the supernatural activity should be natural to us. We should be naturally supernatural. Uh, that's what, I guess, my favorite thing about Sid Roth. Every time he gets on TV, he says, well, we're naturally supernatural. Well, that's how we're called to be. We're called to be naturally supernatural. We really should be so intimate with God 
that we should not be subject to seasons. Uh, you know the story about, uh, this is not in my notes, this is not what I was planning on sharing, but this is where Holy Spirit's taking me, so so be it. Uh, when Jesus 